Okay, so we're, we're, we're working our way through um, Psalm 1. And uh, central to Psalm 1 is this contrast. We've got um, the tree uh, planted by streams of water down here. And then we've got this, this contrasting picture, the chaff that the wind blows away. And, you know, you, you, you chat to any of your friends, any, whether they are Christians or not, and you say, you know, who do you, who, what do you want your life to be like, um, the tree or the chaff? Everyone says the same thing. Okay, everybody wants to prosper. But what we're seeing in this psalm is that, that the way to prosper is, depends, on, depends on which road you choose. Um, and there are two roads. So we've got the way of the righteous and we've got um, the, way, the way of the wicked. And, um, and what we're thinking through for these next few weeks is, okay, so how do we actually, how do, we actually do this then? How do we actually walk along that way of the righteous that leads to this um, lovely picture of prospering? And today we're going to see this. We have to do it um, through Christ. And uh, let, let me start as we think about this by, um, um, by just working through this description here, this righteous person. And um, it's easy to think, well, yeah, you know, this is exactly what I thought the Bible was, was saying. Basically, we've got to try hard to be good. And, you know, if you manage to do this and this, and if you avoid doing that and do this as much as possible, then if you try really hard, then maybe you're going to be more like, um, more like that tree. And if that is what it's saying, then basically you either read Psalm 1 and feel massively discouraged because you think, well, frankly, I'm never going to be like that. Or you feel quite inflated and proud. You think, yeah, look at me. I'm, I'm the kind of tree person around here. Um, but when you begin to engage with it a bit more deeply, I think the question that you, you ask is this. Actually, who is this? I mean, think about your own life. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Okay, who can honestly say that they avoid being influenced negatively by others at all times? Never follow along with the anxiety all around us. Never follow along with the kind of me and mine first culture. Never follow along with materialism or gossip or just forgetting about God. I mean, who can say that they do that consistently? What about this delight in the law of the Lord? Who can say that? If you were to ask your friends, um, what, what are the things that I'm passionate about? How many of them would say, oh, yeah, God and his word. That's the thing. Or maybe some of the time, but, but, but certainly not all of the time. And then, and then we see these little words here, meditating on his Lord day and night. And we just think, seriously? And uh, when we engage with this picture of a tree planted by streams of water and are actually realistic about our lives, probably we end up thinking something like, well, I would love to be like that. But frankly, often I feel spiritually dry, distant from God, lacking stability and struggling, which brings us back to this question. Who is this? Who actually is this? Uh, because I have to be honest, it isn't me. And certainly it isn't me consistently. And, you know, the people who first sung this song, the Israelites, uh, must have thought the same thing. Because when it came to following God's way, the history of Israel, frankly, is this kind of downward spiral that leads not to prosperity, but to exile. So we're thinking, who is this? But then listen to these words of Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, this is after he's risen from the dead, this is what I told you when I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Okay, that's in Luke 24. And then see how Psalm 1 sounds if you put Jesus here. Blessed is Jesus who didn't walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. I mean, it's, Jesus was amazing, wasn't he? He spent time with everybody, but he was never negatively influenced by sinful people. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on this Lord day and night. You think, well, that fits because Jesus never did anyone have a stronger walk with God than Jesus, the eternal son of God who loved him and knew God perfectly. 
this tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season. I mean, Jesus, if anyone led a prosperous life, just think of the fruit of the Spirit and apply it to Jesus. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. And here's, here's, here's what we see when we think about Psalm 1 in the overall picture of the whole Bible. What we see is that actually there are, there are two big representatives of these two ways in life. Over here, we have Adam, the wicked, like chaff blown away. And actually, the Bible says all of us, in and of ourselves, fit within uh, this family, the way of the wicked. But then Jesus came as a new and better Adam, and he walked perfectly this way of the righteous. But, you know, such was Jesus' amazing love for us that he died on the cross and bore the judgment for this way of life, the destruction that we should have faced. He bore it for us. And now he invites us, if we trust in him, to transfer from this path that leads to destruction um, through to this way of the righteous that leads to life. It's all possible through Jesus. We can be forgiven and brought from Adam's way into Jesus' way. Jesus is the way onto this road. And actually, he's the only way that we can walk along this road. So this is how he puts it in John 15. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. So what does that mean for us practically then? Well, it means that we can only walk this way of the righteous through Christ. That's the only way that we can do it. It means that we need to acknowledge that in and of ourselves, we can do nothing. And we need to come to put our trust and faith in Jesus to do it for for us and to walk closely with him day by day and when we do that as we remain in him then we will find that this fruit begins to grow in our lives as well so how do we walk this way that right we do it through Christ we mustn't kid ourselves actually in our own strength we can never walk the way of the righteous so praise God that Jesus walked it perfectly for us he loves us he forgives us when we fail And now he empowers us to follow him along this path of blessing. And so today, friends, whatever comes your way, can I encourage you, stick with Jesus, remain with him. And as we do that over time, this way of the righteous, this fruitful life will begin to appear in our lives as well. Well, let me finish with a prayer and uh, then we'll we'll draw stumps. So Father, thank you so much for this wonderful picture of the way of the righteous, and thank you that in your great goodness you sent Jesus, who walked that road perfectly for us, and thank you that now through faith in him we can belong to that road ourselves, uh, that way that leads to everlasting life, and we pray that we would walk faithfully with Jesus today, uh, no matter what comes our way, and we ask that for Jesus' sake. Amen.